In the summer of 1994, it looked as though the sun was setting on Kurt Warner's NFL dreams. After his senior season at Northern Iowa, Warner had not been drafted by an NFL team. He was left with only free agent contract offers from the San Diego Chargers and the Green Bay Packers. I opted to go to Green Bay thinking, okay, they've got three quarterbacks. Um, I'm going to be the fourth. If I can beat out one of them, if something happens to one of them, if they get injured in a preseason game, you know, all those things looked good for me. And so, you know, I, I jumped at the opportunity to go to Green Bay. Only problem was the three quarterbacks that they did have, Brett Favre, Mark Brunel, and Ty Detmer. Because of the talent that they had there, I never got a chance to play in a game, never got a chance to really showcase what I could do. You know, so I had to go away wondering, will I get a legitimate opportunity, and can I play at this level and, you know, fulfill the dream that I've had for so many years? Warner returned to Cedar Rapids. He worked out on the fields at Northern Iowa by day. By night, he stayed loose working the graveyard shift at a local grocery store. It was called High V, Midwest chain. There was always like a, a Nerf football display. So when it got really early in the morning, we might throw the balls down the aisles or, or have some pickup football games and just mess around a little bit. All the other people were stocking at night and were hoping to become the manager of the grocery store. And here I am saying, well, you know, I'm just doing this for a few months until the NFL calls again. And you could see that they were kind of looking at each other like, come on, I mean, you know, how many people are ever gonna go from stocking shelves to the NFL? At the time I was dating who would be my future wife. I didn't have any income, you know, other than stocking shelves. I didn't have a car, but my wife had a number of different cars. And with her being in nursing school and uh, being a single mother, you know, she wasn't able to afford in the nicest cars, so she kind of had to deal with whatever she had. And so we had, yeah, we had a car for a while that every time we turned left, it would die. So we had to try to figure out routes where it was only right turns. Suspension came through the trunk one time. Um, you know, there was always rats every time we got into the car. We could hear the rats scurrying through the seats and into the trunk. Still finding his way through Iowa in the spring of 1995, Warner received a phone call inviting him back to football not in the NFL, but with the Iowa Barnstormers of the Arena Football League. And it kind of became a no-brainer at that point. You know, making $6 an hour or, you know, make $1,000 a week, get a chance to play football again, and, and who knows what happens. It was really the most fun that I'd ever had playing football. It was a quarterback's game, throw every snap, uh, five, six, seven touchdown passes a game, go for 300 yards, score 60 points. I mean, it was just perfect to get me excited about the game of football again. You know, I could have stocked shelves. I could have sat on the bench behind Brett Favre for three or four years, but I would have never matured as a football player the way I did playing in those games. Warner became the best quarterback in arena football and began to draw interest from the NFL. It was my third year, 1997. I remember getting a call from the Chicago Bears and they said we would love to bring you in for a tryout so i told them you know i can't this week i'm getting married so they said okay you know we'll give you a call later on and we'll set up a time when your honeymoon's over so we're over in jamaica and the second to last night before we left and i woke up the next morning and my right elbow was swollen we went over to the doctor that was there that hardly spoke any english and you know they just kind of shook their head and you know, gave me some medicine and said, well, we, we think you were probably bit by a centipede or a scorpion or, or something. We don't really know. Over the next couple of days, my, you know, elbow continued to swell up. And, you know, all I could think was, okay, here I go. I have to go back and I have to tell the Chicago Bears that I got bit by a scorpion or a centipede and I can't come to the tryout. So I went back and I had to tell them, you know, that was a scenario. And they're like, okay, you know, we'll give you a couple weeks and we'll call you back. Needless to say, they never called back. Uh, I never got an opportunity to try out for the Bears. And I thought that maybe my last opportunity to get into the NFL had just taken place.